2222. Good afternoon. My name is Steve Fields, and we're uh, streaming this across the internet and also on Facebook Live. We're here in Mandra, Western Australia. We're here for the 2017 Hobie Kayak Brim Fishing Australian Championships. Before I start, I've got to say a big thank you to um, all of our sponsors who have been there through uh, since 2009 and particularly this particular year. Um, many thanks to Daiwa Australia. They do fishing lures, rods and reels. The same Lawrence, they do the, the fish finders that people use. Berkeley, another lure and rod company. Atomic Lures again. Rhino Rack, do the roof rack systems to get the kayaks to and from where you're going. Strike Pro, another great lure company. Same with TT Lures. The JML Alliance, do a wide variety of product. Some famously known as Eco Gear. A lot of the guys are familiar with that. Power Pole, they're a shallow water anchor, which uh, a lot of the anglers use. Mortgage Corp, my good friend Neil Carsters, been around since uh, 2009 and sponsors for the last couple of years. The Mandra Key Resort has been the host venue. They have the great accommodation and they've catered for us for breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. Uh, we had a fantastic fireworks here last night, courtesy of those guys as well. We have the Getaway Outdoor Stores. I think there's six stores in Western Australia. And they provide the dealer support not only for this event, but for the rounds that we do here. Just to give you an idea of where it's all started is that we ran 11 rounds this year and uh, it started off in January and that started off in Marlow, Victoria. It kicked the season off. We then ventured a little bit to Bim River, Victoria, over across to Malakuta, and then we headed west to South Australia. Um, we also had the round in WA via the Brim Classics. They do the power boats and the kayaks here. That's Ian Sewell and his crew do a fantastic job. They did that on the Blackwood River. We went back east to the Clyde River at Batemans Bay on the south coast of New South Wales. Uh, then up the coast to Port Macquarie, followed by Gold Coast, Mooloolaba, then did a round back here in Perth. And we ended the season off at Foster, New South Wales. From those rounds, we have 45 of Australia's best anglers to take on the Peel Inlet in the Mandurah area. They've all qualified to be here. Um, it's not a, a free ticket in. Um, this particular region has been a very tough bite for the last three or four days. But uh, as in all events, uh, someone is going to win. And um, we look forward to seeing it is. It's been very, very close on here. Now this particular Australian Champions is slightly different than we've done the last couple of years. We've done a four-day format. In the past it was one pre-fish day, and this one uh, we've had a pre-fish day and then three days of comp. What pre-fishing does is anglers from other states, they get a chance to hop on the water and go wherever they need to go and find out what the system holds, where the fish are at, where the tides and currents and where the flats are. Sure, they do Google Earth, they have the charts, but actually physically getting on the water gives them a wealth of information all the way through. Now with this new format is a, a little bit different because you, now you've got to manage the fishery for three days. So you may have one or two good spots, you can't go there and ping these fish day after day, it won't happen and I think you're going to find some of that is uh, going to come to fruition here. This particular waterway was chosen to be as neutral as possible because you've got a lot of locals here, but it has a great area. You've got the, the snags, the flats, the boat hulls, the docks, and then you have the river systems, the Murray and the Serpentine. So from an angling point of view, we try to make it a balanced field, and the same with the kayaks. Why the kayaks are provided is it makes it an even and level playing field. It's not the guy with the biggest sound or the most electronics and all the bits and pieces. It just makes a, a fair playing field. It also enables anglers to fly in from, you know, ACT, New South Wales and Queensland and all the different states to be here where they would not make that journey across the Nullarbor to take and do it. Now, Friday and Saturday, the first two days of the comp, the session times were from 7 a.m. in the morning until 3 p.m., um, and that gave the anglers a little bit more traveling time. To give you an idea behind it, these are using the Mirage Drive. You use your legs. It's a set of foils like an aquatic animal, and it pushes you along. To the entrance of the, uh, the Murray and the Serpentine is about an hour, depending upon wind and sea conditions in here. 
there were guys going way, way up, and some guys were traveling nearly two hours just to wet a line, while others had taken ventured up into the canals. So you can imagine three to three and a half hours of your session time is just in traveling time, but that's the confidence that you need to have in your ability to find the areas that you think are going to hold fish. Now today, the anglers, to give you an idea of what the routine's been, we've got breakfast here, and they've had breakfast this morning at 5.30 a.m., courtesy of the Magic Key Resort, that put on a great spread for us. We have a registration where anglers are issued a key tag for safety. They have a time limit to come back inside, otherwise they're penalized. The key tags are put back on the board today. Everyone's on time early. We know they're in and we can start proceedings. Um, this morning, anglers were very, very keen. It was normally a 7 o'clock start. The guys were ready and we actually got people away about 6.36 or 6.40. And today was a 2 p.m. finishing time because of the presentation logistics to do it. So a little bit smaller window. The weather forecast has been a bit challenging for the last couple of weeks, but uh, Mandra has put it on. We've had a little bit of wind, but not a lot of the doom and gloom that we had when we first got here. The first couple of forecasts we had when we landed, it looked like we we're going to have to restrict some of the region, which made it very difficult for the anglers. Here, anglers could fish wherever they wanted, and the only no-go zones were really is outside the heads of the Dawesville Cut, and the same thing again at the Mandra here. They were not allowed to fish the ocean. Other than that, as far as they wanted to go, as long as they were back here on their nominated session times, either 3 or 2 o'clock. Now each particular day we nominate the number of fish that they have to catch. All three days here we decide to keep it at three fish. Sometimes we go to four if the fishery is fishing really good or if it's a, they catch a lot of fish and it's not a very hot climate. If it's a hot climate with hot water, we'll back that back down. It's all about preserving the fish here. Each of the kayaks is fitted with a very large live well and the fish are kept in a live well. It's a recirculating pump and that way the water is constantly recirculating all the way through. We have a set of uh, Tubs over here is called the Berkeley Bump Tub. We issue them a way bag. It's a clear bag to hold the fish. They come up, they give their name to score, and they come up here, we weigh their fish, and the angler who's going to take out the championship is the one who has a cumulative weight over that three-day period all the way through. <clears throat> Anglers are also fishing for the Atomic Big Brim. Now, I mentioned Atomic before. Atomic is a lure company that makes some fantastic lures, and quite a few of the anglers that do our series use their lures here, um, and they were awarded $250 for that Big Brim. Um, so far, we had the day one winner of Big Brim was a West Australian. He caught a uh, Sean Higgins, a 1.29 kilo brim. There are quite a few that were over a kilo. Uh, yesterday, we had a Queenslander, uh, Luke Rogan, 0.96, so just a little bit short of that kegger. Um, they're also fishing for, obviously, the crown of being the 2017 um, championship. Um, Saturday the system didn't produce that well. There was only 43 brim weighed in for a total of 21.86 kilos. Um, that was Saturday. Friday was 58 brim at 30.19. Uh, so the fishery, with all the anglers out there and the recreational fishing, has pressured up a little bit and we've seen that. Some of it can be attributed to weather, but some could be just the fish in the system itself. Now, after the start today, we've watched this, is that today was about a 60-40 split. 60% of the people all headed down to the river systems, either the Murray or the, or the uh, uh, Serpentine, while the rest of the system, 40% of the people, headed up to the front of the waterway system itself. To give you a bit of a history of the trophy that we have here, this series started back in 2009. The first one was held at Foster in New South Wales. In the early days, I think we had three championships rounds and then Australian championships. 2009 was taken out by Scott Lovett from Victoria. 2010, Daniel Brown, New South Wales. He comes from a powerboat background, fishes a lot with a guy named Chris Hickson, which a lot of the powerboat guys will know. 2011, um, Daniel Brown backed it up again and also won. 2012, uh, from New South Wales, Shane Taylor. 2013, Daryl Head from New South Wales. 2014, Chris Burbage from Victoria. 2015, Stuart Dunn from New South Wales, and last year's champ, 2016, was Richard Summerton from Victoria. So as it stands now, New South Wales and Victoria are really dominating this championship, so it's a great time to see what the Aussies have to do. We're going to do a bit of a recap so you can kind of see where it is. The first couple of days, I think the second day, it was five West Australians in the top five, and then five people from New South Wales. 
In 10th place at 1.94 kilos from New South Wales is Scott Marcinkowski. In 9th place at 2.14, uh, Joseph Gardner from Western Australia. In 8th place, 2.15 kilos from Queensland, Luke Rogan. He also had that big brim on day number 2. In 7th place, 2.42 kilos from um, Western Australia, Massimo Salomon, excuse my pronunciation, um, in sixth place at 2.46 kilos from New South Wales is Danny Jobson. The bag weights are slowly going up here. Fifth place, one of my favorites, and uh, to take this thing out, I think he got third in 2014, uh, with 2.71 kilos from Western Australia was Shane Owens. Fourth place, 3.30 kilos from Western Australia's um, Sean Higgins. Third place, 3.55 kilos from New South Wales was Simon Morley. Second place, 3.9 kilos from Western Australia, Paul Burton. And leading after two days of comp with almost four kilos, 3.94 kilos from WA, Alex Gresdorf. So that kind of gives you an idea. Where Put your hands together for those top ten guys. Just to give an example, we're doing live feeds out there today, and give you to tell you an idea. In early reports at 10 a.m., Sean Higgins had already had his bag, and he did that on day one. So before the guys even got to the Murray and Serpentine, he already had his three fish limit. So that's some of the strategy you have to play to find the fish or go to the big fish up here. Uh, the same thing, Stephen Pryke early on had two fish, and at 10 o'clock, I believe Simon Morley had zero fish. So it's going to be a very, very close one here. If scoring is ready, got the thumbs up. They're all good. I've got Jim Barry, who's the assistant tournament director, my right-hand man, and makes things happen. And also uh, Zoe Simpson on media. We have Matt Petrie on the bump tub. Now, he has a measurement stick, and it's 26 to the tip. That way, they're always over legal limit for the state. That way, no matter what, every fish that's caught in our live well is above state legal weight. Just so you know, we also have a guy named John Hooper, who was the beach captain. He was in charge of getting all the boats to and from, and we had Bob Finlay, which you'll see him buzzing around from Hobie Media. That's my team. First up is Alex Court from New South Wales. Had one fish yesterday for .52. He got zero fish, or what we call donuts, yesterday, and he's back to one a day. It's always good to get a fish, and always good to come on stage, and we're hoping the people who didn't get fish actually caught some fish today. Jim, yep. Jimbo, you might have to tweak that a little bit. Number three on here. Big day on the water? It was a great day on the water. I quite enjoyed it. Yeah. Canals or the river systems? The rivers. My the legs river. are still telling me it's the rivers. And how long did it take you to get up to the top there today? Um, probably took over an hour to get there, an hour 20 to go. Hour over 20 an, over an hour 20 to come back. That sounds yeah. good. Let's see what this first fish is going to take and come in away at. Jim's got to hit the button first and then we'll be okay. A reset. That's all right. You get a break now. All right, Jim, you ready? Here we go. First one off the rake is going to come in at point four one. Well, I hope you enjoyed good. your series. It's oh, good yeah. to see you made the uh, the championships. It's a select group of people that get to wear this jersey. Yep, very happy to be here. Thank Thanks, you, mate. Dave. Cheers. Well done. Please thank these guys. They've had four big days. They've traveled a long ways here. Danny Jobson from New South Wales, three fish on day one for 1.65. One fish yesterday at point eight one. One fish today. This needs to be a 1.49 kilo fish. I wish, Dave, but uh, it's a little bit short. Sadly, mate, it's All a right. little one. So we're seeing where you're going to end up. You had a good time? Yeah, I've loved it, mate. It's been awesome. There we go. 0.48. Please put your hands together. These guys have done an amazing job all the way through. Need all the encouragement they can. It's, you can imagine uh, doing 30 kilometers every day with your legs going through wind. Stephen Majera is next. One fish uh, yes, on uh, the first day. He's from Victoria, made the way up. None yesterday, one today. Big four days, wasn't it? Huge four days. I'll tell you what. We're all uh, running on Red Bulls, I think. Um, you need 3.57 kilos, but we'll see what we come anyway. Not too bad. I hope you enjoyed it. Point three seven. Well thank done, and I thank you for making the championships. It has been a long, long season, and we're glad to wrap it up. Glenn Allen is one of my top five picks. Very good angler. 
Uh, he's from New South Wales. One fish yesterday for .31, two fish yesterday for .6 there, three fish. Finally. Is this right? Three? Did you finally do it? I did. Well done. What Stop did you do lazy. different? Didn't be, uh, I paddled nine kilometres, I think. <clears throat> How many? Down the river. Down nine, the river? Nine k's. Not to the river, to the canals. It's, uh, it's rewarding after seeing a couple of fish. I mean, you always get fish. You're one of my top five guys to finally get it back. Did you do anything different over the first yeah, two days? Yeah, I was um, a lot more patient. Sat there, pretty much dropped the plastics <clears throat> under the wharfs and sat there for ages and ages and cut the little hops and same thing. What we found the guys fishing yellows to blacks is yellow, you just have to slow it down yeah, yeah. to where Slows you're like down. on 15, 20 milligrams of Valium. Yeah, sort of so, worked it out yesterday, but... Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Closer. You need 2.9, That's not, but it's going to be a good bag. You got three fish, 1.64. Please put your hands together. That's good. Are you going to big brim today? You want to weigh big brim? Yeah, let's do that. Each day is a $250. You take the bag. I'll get this one. Is the sound on number three okay, Jim? Yep, perfect. All right, this could be a $250 fish. At least it'll start you back off. You'll be in the lead for Big Brim no matter what happens, but it shows you where you're at. You're at 0 .79, not too bad. Let's see if it holds all the way through. It's great to see people get the three fish and do it, very good. We've got people from Europe and the United States and a lot of people in China and Asia watching this. It's a broadcast. We've got a lot of good friends that follow us. We do Stephen Pryke on stage next. He's in the youth division. I think he's pretty much dominated the youth with a Jack Gammy in our series. Three fish. You worked it out. Yeah, finally worked it out. What did you do? Uh, I just fished a lot lighter line today and fished smaller jig heads. When you say lighter line, what size weight are you talking here? Uh, so three pound. Three pound. Was that straight through or through uh, uh, leader? Three pound, to braid. Through braid. Zero fish on day one, two on day two. Finally gets it three fish. Fantastic. Youth division, 1.38. Well done, matey. Thank you. I know it's very rewarding as an angler. Any of you guys would know that. If you have a bad day of fishing, it's no good. But if you get one or two fish, or in a competition, if you can improve each day, it makes you a lot happier. Mitch King. Just the one. Just the one today. Yeah, the little fella. Where'd you go? Uh, down the canals. So canals? Uh, I've fished the rivers for the last three days, including the pre-fish. And um, look, they're beautiful looking rivers. And my East Coast black brim tactics just didn't gel well. So... Um, decided to not do the distance today. There you go. 0. 0.55. Thank you very much for attending the championships. No it's great to see you here from Victoria. Fantastic. Andy Mitchell is a local. Zero fish on day one. One on day two and one here. Just didn't quite come together. You're still smiling. And I believe you're a proud owner of one of the new kayaks. I am, yeah. The, the uh, getaway group bought all these kayaks, and they're selling them after the event. And um, how do you like them? They're quite good, aren't they? Oh, I love it. That love uh, it. reverse drive and that Mirage 180 makes a big difference. Good to see you get a fish again. 0.43. I hope you enjoyed the competition. Thank you, Steve. Thank, Thank you. you very much. A WA guy. Put your hands together for sure. Well done. Kane Terry, New South Wales. Oh, boom, boom. Three on day one, three on day two, and one on day three. That was a struggle today. Whoa. Fish the same spots or new spots? Same spots. Same yeah. spots. Do you reckon they were just fished out? Oh, they just shut down. Shut yeah. down. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at here. Point three seven puts you into 10th place so far. See where you end up that way. Well done. Kane Terry from New South Wales. David Shanahan from Victoria. Two fish on day one, three on day two, and three on day three. Needs currently in 16th place. Needs 2.19 kilos to take the lead. They're not on steroids. They're not on steroids. I hope not. Okay. It's not 2.19, but let's see if this improves you over that. It's going to be 1.21 kilos. Currently in fifth place. Thanks, Steve. Put your hands together. That's fantastic. Awesome. Kevin Bowes, he um, had zero fish or donuts on day one, the same on day two. He actually won $100. We have a thing called the donut dough. That was pretty tasty, wasn't it, the $100? Oh, yeah, it was better than nothing. <laughs> That's how I look at it. All right, you got one fish. 
And you told me earlier, I saw you at the bump tubs, that you finally worked it out. You just threw it out, opened the bale, sat around for a while, winded it in. That's exactly right. Four days later, <laughs> all right? Got you got it. You've wired it. That's good. That one's going to come in at point five six. Please put your hands together for Kevin Buzz from Thank New you. South Wales. Fantastic. <clears throat> Tyson Hayes does very well. I thought this waterway would suit him. He's from Queensland. They fish pontoons and canals extensively. Only one on day one, one on day two, three on day three. What did you change? Uh, just the uh, uh, pontoons. I went from pontoons to uh, natural trees. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I went up probably eight or nine k's up river and uh, they were just everywhere. So we had a good day fishing. Yeah, it was good. Okay, let's see where this puts you in. You're in 25th place. It's only up from there. 1.39 kilos puts you up into 12th place. Fantastic. Well done. Brendan Pichel is next. Two fish on day one. Donuts on day two. Two fish on day number three. From New South Wales. How are you, sir? Good, thanks, Steve. A couple fish. Yeah, two. Better than none. Long series. <laughs> it was. Four days. There we go. Those two, two fish are going to come in at 0.87. Well done. Excellent. Great to see you to make your journey across to Western Australia, in particular Mandra over here. We love the place. What are, you guys are spoiled over here. Tim Olson's from the ACT. Donuts on day one, two fish on day two, and only two on day three. He was pretty happy yesterday. He finally got some fish. Just not quite that third fish today. I uh, would have been happy if, my, if one fish didn't die yesterday. Uh, so. yeah, that's all right. This is a nice but fish. No, I'm happy with that. You're happy yeah, with that. Managed to crack a pattern and um, kept to it. And yeah. yeah. Considering Lake Burley Griffith doesn't have a lot of brim. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> there Carp, you go. That's about it. Carp is about it. Point nine six. Well done. Excellent. Great you. to see you over Cheers. here in Western Thank Australia. I really appreciate these guys making the time, the effort, and the expense to get here. They've done well. Dylan Hennis is next from Victoria. Struggled on day one. Two on day two and only one on day three. We saw him in the canals or two or three times. We'll find out. Fish canals today? Yeah, canals today. Just no love. No love at all. No love at all. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Point six zeros. Well done. Okay. Great to see you over here. Thank you. How many angles we got left, Jim? Two anglers left. Three. Oh dear, I'm going to have to read something. Joseph, come on up. Young Gun from Western Australia smoked it on day one with three fish at 1.72. I think you're probably fourth or fifth or something thereabouts. Yeah, about that. Yesterday the wheels fell off. Today, three. Yeah, they're not big though. They're not big? Where'd you go? Uh, Murray, Wa Murray Waters, so. Murray, well, how far is that today, paddling wise? Uh, about eight k's eight by the time k's. you get in there, yeah. All right. You need 1.81 kilos to take the lead. We know that's not going to happen, nah. but let's see if it can take and get you in there. 1.13 puts you into fifth place. Well done. How many angles do we have left on the bump tub? Total of four. We'll just read this to, to put it all the way through. So we still have Stephen Pryke from Victoria in 10th place at 2.52 kilos. Glenn Allen is weighed in, 9th place, 2.6 kilos from New South Wales. 8th place, uh, who has not weighed in, I'm not sure, I don't see him up there. Shane Owen is hanging on to 8th place at 2.71 kilos. 7th place at 2.94 is Danny Jobson from New South Wales. 6th place, who has weighed in, is 2.97 kilos from um, Victoria is David Shanahan. Fifth place from Western Australia, just weighed in, obviously, uh, 3.27 kilos, Joseph Gardner. Sean Higgins, we have not seen him yet. He's still in fourth place, even though he has not weighed in at 3.30 kilos. Simon Morley, who has not weighed in, 3.55 kilos, is still in uh, third. Second is still Paul Burton at 3.90. First, Alex is still in there at 3.94. Uh, Massimo is on next. We can take and bring him up. Three fish on day one. One fish on day two. Two fish on day three. Needs 1.53 kilos out of those two fish. Shaking his head like it's not going to happen. 
might just Whoa. go. I don't know. Yeah, no, I might just go a kilo. Just go a kilo, yeah. he says. Okay, you need to crawl into this to see where this takes you. You're currently in 11th place. 1.05 kilos puts you into fourth place. Did you have a good series so far? Yeah, yeah, had a good time. Yeah, it was awesome. It was because you, is this your first Australian championship? Yeah, yeah, first. And how long time, you yeah. been fishing out of the kayaks here? Um, oh, three years. I three think. years. Yeah, three years. The so. scene over here has just grown and grown and grown. Mainly the angles you put in, and also the the support of uh, you know guys like Brim Classics and Wreck Fish and things like that. So yeah, it's awesome. Sounds good. All right, Cheers, thanks. Sir. Here we go. Thank you. Now, Shane Higgins is next. He's currently in fifth place. Three fish on day one at 2.11 kilos. Three fish yesterday at 1.19 kilos. Three fish today. He only needs 0.65, and I can assure you three fish are going to be more than that. How are you? Yeah, not bad, yep. Not bad. And uh, the same canal system, basically? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same, yeah. You seem to move, that, this way, that one canal system you stayed in and you just kind of hopped around a little bit and uh, it seemed to work for you. Yeah, you seem to find me always in a similar place. Because you also had that big brim on day one and also on day one, by 7.45, you already had your three fish limit. So that was a good one. All right, let's find out where you end up. You only need 0.65. You're definitely going to move to the lead, but by how much? 0.59 puts you in it first place. Fantastic. Well done. See if he hangs on. He's currently sitting at 4.89 kilos. Simon Morley, he was currently in third place earlier. Three fish on day one at 1.72 kilos. Consistent day two, 1.83. Three fish today. You need 1.35 to take the lead. I won't have that, no. But I'm happy I've got three each day. So each day so you've got that. three. This is going to be close. Here we go. Let's find out where you're going to be on that ladder. 1.15 <laughs> kilo puts you into second. Happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy just to be. It's awesome. That's good. Make some more noise for this guy. He's put a big effort in. Bags every single day. He made the journey across. Fantastic. He also won, I think, Angler of the Year two years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Rightio, with three fish on day one at 2.15 kilos, three fish on day two at 1.79 kilos, says he's been here about 10 years, he needs 0.96 to take the lead. Oh, I'll have the lead for a minute, but not for long. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm a bit gutted. Lost a few fish this weekend that probably cost me massively, so... Still and uh, we'll, def we'll definitely have a chat after this because we'll talk about where you went and yeah. things. 0 0.96. 1.60. Put your hands together for the 2017 Hubby Kayak Brim Australian Championship. I'll be the first to shake your hand. Can someone come grab his bag, please? No, you got one more? Oh, sorry. One more. My apologies. Yeah, 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 there's one more. Scoring to, didn't let me know. Do you want to let? Do you want to wait? It's not scoring from. Room? I'll wait for big rooms. My apologies. You want him to stay up here? He stays up here. Let's get the big brim out. You choose it. I'll take the mic. My apologies, gang. I assumed he was the last one according to this one. Can I have that screen back for big brim? Thank you. One more to go. I forgot about Paul. My apologies, Paul. Here we go. He's changing his screen. Okay. I don't have that, but we'll just wait anyway where we're at. Let's go for Big Brim is at 0.81. And you have knocked off Alex, or sorry, uh, Warren, Glenn Allen. So that's definitely in. You grab the fish. I don't handle fish. Work cover. All right. Now, I'll try this one more time. Paul Burton from Western Australia. Three fish on day one at 2.17. Three fish on day two at 1.73. Three fish on day three. Needs 1.65 kilos. What do you reckon? It's going to be close. It's going to be close. I'm pretty terrible at guessing whites. I was going to guess, but I've already made one mistake up here, so I'm not going to do that. That's a nice fish in there, too. 
All right, Alex is at 5.54 kilos. You need a 1.65 kilos. Easy, boy. <laughs> now I'm gonna shake your hand. Cheers. Congratulations, congratulations. Do you wanna weigh this one for Big Brim? Yeah, yeah. He's gonna weigh it for yeah. Big Brim. That was a bit nerve wracking. Sorry, All right, here we go. You need um, 8.82 or more. You make the call. You can weigh both if you want. It's that kind of thing. All right. Are you also going to get big brim? 0.82. There is no need to weigh the other one. You've done well. Okay, you take the fish back, and we'll go from there. What we're going to do is uh, Jim's going to do some scoring. There's a few things here, and then we'll bring some people on stage. Um, he's going to have that sheet for donut dough is going to go first, Jimbo, I think. And that one draw we talked about earlier is going to stay in, yes? Okay. All right. We have a thing called donut dough, and it's uh, for people who get zero or no fish. Looks like a donut. We give them a hundred dollars. That's per day. Um, this one out of the hat with all the people who didn't get fish, we're going to bring on stage is Tamika Purnell for the donut dough. Come on up, Tamika. <clears throat> This is not necessarily a men's sport. There are girls here. We've got quite a few girls that are fishing over east. We hope it happens here. We have a youth division at 16 to 21 years of age, a masters, a grand masters, also the females. And you get $100 for that. How, how are you going? Thank you. I am knackered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really tough out there. Um, but I had fun. I practiced my pontoon fishing, which I'm not very good at, and I didn't get yelled at by anyone. Um, I got dusted by a few yesterday, which sort of gave me a bit more encouragement today, but yeah, unfortunately none in the well. Well, at least you got $100 for your effort. That's good. That sounds Thank good. Thank you, Steve. Radio. Is uh, Bob Finlay around anywhere? He wanted to be cock. Is he coming up now or is he going to wait? You'll do the photos in? All right. Big Brim is... Um, Paul Burton still here? Is he down photographing fish? While we're waiting for these guys to do it, I'd like to take and uh, bring on Andrew Rowland from Wreck Fish. Is Andrew here? Wreck Fish have been a a voice for recreational fishing here for a long, long time. We work well with these guys. We improve our live wells, our techniques, and it works well. How are you, sir? Yeah, great. Thanks, Steve. Another great championship and another great event here in Western Australia, in particular Mandra. Yeah, fantastic fishery we have here, and it's great to see the competitors from all over the country and, and the local guys as well doing quite well. Now, for those who are watching here who do know Wreck Fish or you've got some new spectators, tell us a little bit about Wreck Fish West. Yeah, so Wreck Fish West is the peak body. Uh, we're independent of government and we represent the uh, recreational fishing community of Western Australia. Um, we make sure and work very hard to ensure sustainable fisheries and uh, access to, to good fishing quality. Um, and we also make sure that when people get out there, they have op opportunities to enjoy their fishing um, and do it in a safe way. That sounds good. Now, we work with Rec Fish on this, and what we've done is most of the brim over the last couple of days, we've actually tagged the brim. And part of it is we have a very good live well system. All the fish released back into the system, but brim grow at a very slow rate. In this tagging process, they go and you catch a fish, you can call a tag in. We can look at the, the migratory uh, patterns of where these fish go and also so the growth rate. So how important is that tagging system in all this wreck fishing stuff? Yeah, it's, it's really important. I mean, obviously an iconic species of the system. And, um, you know, as the stewards of the fishery, it's really important that the, the wreck fishing community are doing their part. And we actually just had a, a recapture as well. So I'm, I haven't got the database with us, so I can't really tell you where it was tagged uh, originally, but it was caught re, uh, recaptured today over at the mouth of the Murray River. Um, and we're also putting new tags into the, to the other fish that we're catching here today. And so it's really important way of um, adding to the science, giving us good data to understand our fishery. So we can um, do the best to manage it and look after it. Was that one of the fish that we tagged from the competition? 
Uh, no, it oh, was an old tag. No, oh, an old it tag. might have been one we actually tagged at the last grand final on that sounds, side sounds of the good. history. Well, I really appreciate that. Put your hands together for Rec Fish West. Looking after you, recreational fishers. I love it. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you, Steve. Good talking to you. If we can, uh, how are we going with uh, Bob and Alex? Is Alex around? We'll have to get Alex back up here and we can get under the way. If we got to Matt Williams and uh, Tanya McFarland too, if you're just stand by those two people. Yeah. Just waiting on Paul Burton and we can get started. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and, uh, oh, here comes Paul. Paul, come on up. And um, we also want to get the other winners of Atomic Big Brim. Well done on your $250. That's good. Sean Higgins, is he around? Sean, can you please come up? And also Luke Rogan from Queensland. We need to get all three of you guys up on stage, please. Come on up, guys, and we'll do it. Now, these three guys were able to catch the largest fish on a specific day, and they're all $250 better off. Come on in. I'll just present this one. This is day two, would be you. You get a little plaque for yourself. Day number one, and day number three, Big Bram. Just slide up here a little bit, and then Bob Finley will do it. Put your hands together for these guys. He's risen to the top. Fantastic. I'd like to bring up Tanya McFarlane next, please. Tanya, can you come up? How are you? I'm well, Steve. That's Thank good. You. Now, Tanya McFarlane is from the Mandy Key Resort, and uh, I said earlier when we had some of the presentations, um, from our first time we flew over here and saw the resort and the waterway, it was so easy. And likewise, working with your guys and your team was fantastic. So I, I really appreciate that. We haven't had a chance to frame this yet, but this will be a competitor's jersey. And every angler that has been here is going to re you get this and you can put it on your wall for awesome. taking and being a, a good host for it that way. So really appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure having you all. Really has. Tell us a little bit about the resort itself. Sure. Well, our main business is weddings, so this has been absolutely refreshing for us. Um, we obviously have a marina, 27 apartments, a restaurant and function centre. Um, so yeah, this is events are our thing, but this has certainly been a unique one for us. In addition to that, we have a small little trophy oh. for you to take. We appreciate it. Have a look at Bob there. There you go. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Well done. Steve. Okay. If you can just stay up here. Matt Williams is next. This is yours. Matt, come on up. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt Steve. Williams, the head of the Getaway Outdoors group. Uh, there's, uh, tell us a little bit about Getaway Outdoors. Yeah, we're a WA-based retailer of uh, outdoor leisure products, so camping, fishing, water sports, RV, four-wheel drive products. We planned this three years ago and very few people knew about it. We got the event trailer over here and, and, and brought that across. And these things do take two or three years of planning to get council permits, right time of year and things like that. We had a little bit of a scare with the, the water system about six or eight months ago, but it's come good again. Um, and for all your hard work behind the scenes, you've purchased all these boats with your stores on the water every day, barbecues at night. The least I can do is say thank you very much. It has been a pleasure. Jeez, thank you. And likewise, again, is we have a signed jersey for you, and we'll get that framed so you can hang it up in the corporate store. So that's good. Fantastic. All right, thanks. All right, we're going to get started. Just give us two seconds there. we get both of you guys here at the same time. There you go. Perfect. Place. 
before you get into the short truck, you can work that one. So you guys will hand it out. Bob will get photos. Uh, the cha the championship gets that that and the number one prize. Okay, here we go in the presentations for the end of the season, the 2017 Hobie Kayak Australian Championships. In 10th place is from New South Wales, Glenn Allen, six fish for 2.60 kilos. Please put your hands together. These guys have had a long week and spent a lot of money getting here. And some sunnies, and we can get Congratulations. coming next, and all three of you in the photo. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Hang on, Glenn. Got two people next to you. There you go. There you go. Okay, in ninth place um, from WA, he hung in there and. Five fish for 2.71 kilos. That is a feat in itself to hang in the top 10 and have no good on day three. Shane Owens. He had a great recovery on day two. Three fish for 1.79 kilos. Paddled forever today and it just didn't pay off. No, it's all right, mate. You're in the top 10 in the championships. That's quite good. Put your hands together, please. Shane Owens from Western Australia. And the photo's the same again, all the way at the front, and both of you on either side. Here's Dad taking the photo. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. How you going? <laughs> all right, in eighth place from New South Wales, uh, total of five fish for 2.94 kilos. And here's two guys that didn't get their limits but still made it in the top ten. Big effort in from Newcastle, not the Central Coast, he told me. Danny Jobson, come on up. Well done, Danny. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, now right up front here again. Seventh place from Victoria, the first Victorian in it, came in at seventh place. Eight fish for 2.97 kilos, David Shanahan. Well done, David. Two fish on day one, three fish on day two, 2.97 for eight fish. Big effort. These guys are getting a, a pack of sponsors, lures. They're also getting a set of Hubby Polarized glasses. Hubby Polarized is a new company in Australia, and they make some fantastic fishing lenses. Rightio, in sixth place from Western Australia, seven fish for 3.27 uh, kilos. Joseph Garter, make some noise for WA. Okay, in fifth place, a guy who I butcher his name every single time, six fish for 3.47 kilos. I'm just going to say Massimo and leave it at that. <laughs> Salomon. Salomon. Close. Well, that's good. That's good. Well done, matey. Also from Western Australia. I didn't hear you that time. That's better. Remember, W of Nay have never been on this trophy before, so this is a bit of history going on today. All right. From New South Wales, total of nine fish for 4.70 kilos. One of the only four anglers who got their limit on every single day. New South Wales, Simon Morley. He also won Angler's Choice Award. It's kind of like our best and fairest was voted that in on Saturday night. Well done, Simon. Thanks, Mike. Well done. <laughs> Uh, 
That noise came from Sid Donut. Rightio, we're going to start making some big noise now. You guys, WA has smashed it, the top three. Round one, he had three fish for 2.11. Second round, three for 1.19. Three for 1.59 kilos. Total of nine fish, 4.89 kilos. Make some noise. Sean Higgins from Western Australia. Big noise, yes. And $500 cash to go along with it. Stay on stage just for two seconds. We're going to have a little bit of a chat. Well done. Now, tell us kind of generally what lures you're using, what color, and where you generally fish. A lot of people who are recreational fishing, they may have bought a kayak for the first time. They may fish in power boats. And all of a sudden, you're on stage, and uh, you've got to take on $500. You got third in Australian Championship. What was their secret to doing that? Um, so the first two days, I mainly got most of my fish on Z-Man grubs because um, like the blowfish are pretty bad. So and that's a soft plastic, yeah. yeah so a soft plastic, know. little yep. yeah. It's in a watermelon colour, um, and yeah, fishing a 1.3 gram jig head. So yeah, f fairly light, not too light, but um, and yeah, four pound uh, leader uh, fish pretty light because the water is pretty clear. And then today it was mainly well, it was all on the Eco Gear Aqua Prawns and Salt and Pepper. Um, I fished the BP 50s, so they're the bigger ones, and just fish them unweighted on a on like a um, decoy worm hook. What colour are you using? The salt and pepper? So that yeah. looks like bread. There's a lot of people that feed their fish on the docks, and this particular lure is a soft plastic. And I guess you had such a light jig head, it was just floating down lightly, like you throw a piece of bread in, and they were going that way. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, it just slowly sinks down uh, to the fish, and so usually as soon as, as soon as you sort of lose sight of it, if they're there, they'll. I'll grab Sounds it. good. Thank you very much for third place. One more time, hands together, third place from Western Australia, Sean Higgins. Righty O. In second place, three on day one, three on day two, three on day three, 5.54 kilos. From Western Australia, Alex Gresdorf. Alex? Alex also takes home $750 for his efforts. Cheers, Thank you. Cheers. Photo time, and then we'll have a small little chat. Fantastic. Alex, uh, let's have a bit of a chat. You're pretty quiet most of the week, as most of West Australians. Um, and you said you lost some fish that probably cost you the tournament. Were that way up the river in Snags, or where was it? Where were you fishing? Because that was a pretty much a secret the whole time. Oh, look, I, I, I decided to go to an old haunt just to trip. Is, is that on? I think that's on, actually. There you go. Hit the bottom button, it turns off. Yeah. Go ahead. I, I had a plan to go way up river pretty much every day. Um, I was On Friday, I sort of decided, oh, the weather conditions is just perfect for a canal system in the river. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'll go in there and have a crack for a half hour and see how it goes. In a half hour, I had two 31 forkers and a 29 forker, just bang, 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 and they were just on the chew. I lost probably two kilo fish on Friday. Um, Saturday, I did the same thing, fished the same way. Um, just didn't get any big bites yesterday. Now, when you say way up, for the people who understand it, how far did you actually go time-wise? Is there a location or a general location? Uh, it's about an hour and a half paddle each okay. way. So it's about an hour and 50 back in the wind and about an hour and a half to get there. It takes a lot of time out of your fishing day. You've got to be fairly confident in that yeah. place you're going to, isn't it? The, the problem is the bite's late. So you, gotcha. literally, like my two fish, my biggest fish today came with about five minutes to fish. And I, I knew they were biting. And it's just a shame to have to go, but that's tournament fishing. We knew early on, we, uh, I don't know if you were watching or not, Shane, Sean had his fish early on in the piece and yeah. I think the reports from our media but out there at one stage you had zero and none I had one at, at about nine o'clock that was it that's a tough about, that's a tough day I had one at nine and then I got a second one at about 11 30 which was like a 26 tipper and then um yeah the last sort of 15 minutes I got the bigger one got another one 
dropped actually I dropped two just, just rushing around and trying to yeah. make the most out of each cast but I mean that's fishing look I had a I didn't think I could paddle that far for three days in a row I'm pretty you, happy we talked about that earlier that yes, I did yes, it yeah. um, I'm stoked to be second place I'm a bit disappointed in the fish I lost but that's fishing that's I mean, you, right, can't, uh, you can't catch every one and there's jaggy ones that you land and th- those are good and then there's ones that you think you should have landed and you don't so that sounds good is now, what it is. we're going to interview the top two guys uh, on camera and we'll need you to bring back your rods and some lures so we can film that for later yep. on yep. please put your hands together second place won the West Australian Classic Finals Alex Gresberg mighty thank you very much and your check and your goodies and some sunnies Rightio, the first West Australian to be on the championship trophy. That's a big one. Three fish on day one for 2.17, three on day two at 1.73, three on day three at 1.91 to push them across the line. 5.81 kilos from West Australia, the new, I can say it now and mean it, 2017 Hobie Kayak Australian champion, Paul Burton. First one on the trophy. I can't hear you. During the first couple of days, the West Australians, you couldn't talk to them. What'd you catch them on? Nope. Where'd you catch them? Out there. Very, very tight-lipped. We get the photo first. We'll have a bit of a chat real quickly. I'll put this in here for you. I promise to give it back. How does it feel? Pretty bloody good. <laughs> Pretty bloody good. But yeah. Um, how long have you been fishing in general, and how long have you been kayak fishing? Um, this is everyone's going to hate it. This is my first year doing kayak comps. Uh, I did boat rounds last year, so that's my two years I've done done tournament fishing, but. Kayak fishing is a different thing. The strategies really play a lot into it. In a power boat, you can run and gun. You can go over there, and if it doesn't work, you can blast over here. A kayak, as you've seen, an hour, 30 hours, 40 minutes, and I assume now you can tell me you fished up the rivers? No. You didn't? I probably paddled about 15 k's all weekend. All weekend. Where did you fish then? I'm um, in the canals. I in the canals? All three canals. Well, there you go. Um, I caught one fish out of one of them. I got no fish out of the other. I caught every other fish in the town canals. Did you fish the second one to the right? Going past the thing? No? I uh, went into the first entry. First entry? Yeah, and that's where I fished pretty much for three days. All right. To the other anglers who either got zero or the ones who didn't, what did you fish? What did you catch them on? What lures, lines, and things like um, that? I use, I caught a couple on um, SX40s. And that's a hard body lure? Yeah. Okay, and what color was that one? Uh, it's like a smoky gray. I don't know what color's called, but like that gray with red eyes. Okay. Um, hey. There you go. <laughs> Vampire. All right. Um, and then every other fish I caught come on 40 mil brim prawns. Fish done weighted. What, what color? Salt and pepper again? or No, uh, king prawn. King prawn? Yeah, pinky color. Okay. That sounds yeah. good. Um, you've also got $1,000. That's going to help. Yeah. Does this go to lures or to the misses? I spend probably... I was about 10 packs of brim prawns this weekend. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, now go back and get your tackle and things like that, and we're going to come up and film it. But before we do that, there's one very important thing you need to do. You need to grab that trophy, and you need to hold that trophy up, because your name is going on it. And we make some big noise here. The first West Australian to take a hoping since 2009, <laughs> Paul Burton. <laughs> hey! Well done. We put it back up there. We get to keep that. Um, we're going to wrap things up. I'd like to start off one is from my team itself, and that's uh, Bob Finlay on Hobie Media. Put your hand together, Bob. Raise your hand so people are. There you go. Zoe Simpson. Facebook one. Jim Berry over there in the corner. Jimbo. John Hooper. Where's John? There he is back there, looking on boats. There's John, beach captain extraordinaire, and his assistant, and also the guy on the bump tubs to officiate, Matt Petrie over the far side. Fantastic. Tandy McFarlane from Manjaki Resorts, all the getaway store group that is here, and also for Matt Williams for helping me put this thing together. 
Great event, great year. We look forward to next season, and it was a really our pleasure to be here in Western Australia, especially here, and uh, it put on a great event, and I'm pretty stoked at it. So until then, we'll see you probably end of January, February next year for the 2018 season. Thank you, and good afternoon.